Hello and welcome to part 6 of our CardCAD tutorial. So we just associated all of the components in our design to PCB footprints. Now what we're going to do is create the PCB. So click on Run PCB New and it will tell it ask you if you want to create the file CardCAD underscore dot PCB. And here we are with a blank PCB. So the first thing we need to do is import the netlist. So that was the file that we generated from here and that then we associated footprints with. So you go to tools, netlist, and it comes up immediately, it will say, it will come up with the actual netlist of the schematic that we're working on. It does this on its own. So we do read current netlist and then close. And here are all of the footprints all on top of each other. That's not very good. We don't can't really do anything if they're all on top of each other. So the first thing to do is to click on this. Move footprint, mode footprint, manual and automatic movement and placement. Click on this, then right click on the background, global spread and place. Automatically spread out what we want to do is spread out all footprints. Yep. Right, so there is all the footprints. Now we've got to get all those on a board. That is a hell of a lot of resistors. I think now I, I just I just took a while to actually look at this, and I tried to get these on a five by five board, five a five no a five centimeter diameter circle, because it's cheap to produce five by five centimeter boards. That was very tricky. So let's start with a ten by ten centimeter diameter circle, which should be a lot easier. So the way to a good an easy way to sort of understand what size the board is. First of all we'll draw the board. So we'll select select edge cuts to say where the edge of the board is. And we use this tool here, graphic line, to actually define the edge of the board. I'm not just going to freehand this. What I'm going to do is go to dimensions and grid and set up a user defined grid, which is ten a ten mil spacing. In fact, you know what, a hundred mil spacing, so I actually get the grid. Then I'm going to right click on, on the background and say grid select user grid. And you can actually see there's a ten that's a ten centimeter board. Now if I just um, drag like this and then double click, I've actually created the edge of the board there. And now I can um, I'm gonna put the grid back to I don't know, say a one mil spacing and move that back. So that is the, the maximum size of my board. What I want to do now is I actually want to create a circle within that because it's going to be a sort of round bauble. So if I set the grid to, well we need to set it to 5 mil Oh yeah, and we should really align this with with five mil. Mm, should have done that before. <laughs> oh god. Okay, I want to draw a circle within this, and of course, it's not aligned to the grid. Okay, the problem is I'm not on a one mil grid. I'm on a five mil grid, but if I look at this, it looks like I'm about one mil away from there and two mil away from there. So if I just go onto a one mil grid, a second, then move this. If I just move it, let's see what I was doing down and then back to a 5 mil grid I can see that I'm 1 mil out still I don't actually know what, I'm, what am I actually doing here I don't know. Um, yeah they were right so now I'm aligned with a 5 mil grid why did I want to do that? It won't work because it's exactly 20 divisions, so there's no midpoint. No, the midpoint is there. Uh... 
There is a midpoint. And so there we go. Um, actually, I want a better, I want a much smaller grid than that. So I want to get as close to the edge as possible. Right, there we go. So there, there is a circle that fits within Let me select something reasonable. It fits within a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter shape. Now, now of course we've got to lay these out in there. Now that we have a lot of space, it shouldn't be a problem. Now to move components, just press M. And what I want to do, don't worry about those artifacts, I can get rid of them by holding down F3 to keep refreshing. I'm going to put the 555 timer down here because I'm just going to place these crudely around. Sometimes it's useful to turn this on, the cursor shape. And then if I put this up here, because what I want to do. I was trying to think how best can I lay this out. Now we know that these are the outputs where the, most of the LEDs connect. This is also an LED output for QA on the shift register. But most of them are there. So what I was thinking is if we connect it up so that the furthest LED is there and goes like that, then the next LED is there and connects to that pin and goes like that and so on. Maybe we can do it in a way where they do not have to overlap each other. So to work that out, now what I could do is show you this horrendous mess. That is all the connections that needs to be made. But don't worry, we will make those connections. So let's try and work this out. If I look at these LEDs, what we've got is D8, I know, is the furthest lead. So if I just move that over here a sec, and I can actually check what that should connect to. I mean, I can look at the rat's nest, but I won't, still won't be able to see it. But if I... Let me get rid of this grid, it's annoying. If I click on the pad, the non-ground pad, press X, which is to create a wire or a trace, and it will create a trace on the top layer now. So I've just switched back from edge cuts to the top front copper. It will actually highlight where that has to go to. And of course it goes to a resistor actually. So I know that I need that resistor. So if I just move that resistor over here as well, and just double check, yeah, that goes to there, and that goes to there. I'm just pressing X to start start a wire, then I'm pressing escape. So I know that's the end one. Ground, we've got ground there, and that's the end one. So let's put that lead at the top. And we'll put its resistor up there as well. So let's do that with all of the LEDs. So the, this one will be placed here and we'll go around that way and we'll try and evenly space the LEDs so that the next LED, I'll just do it for the next one. But if I try and have a look what that is, if I select this pin, Okay, that's a special pin. Um, D7 will be the next one, right? And where does that connect to? Connects to that resistor. Connect that over there, and that connects to there. Okay. Now Let's just do that for the rest of the pins, for the rest of the LEDs. Right, so I've moved all the LEDs around now. And 
I'm gonna try. I'm gonna straighten them out so they're kind of evenly spaced in an interesting pattern. Well, in an even pattern. But what needs to happen then next? These are all in the right place. So now, if I click on um, each of these in succession with an X, you'll see that they go round. Then that one, then that one, then that one, then that one. Where does this one go? Oh, yeah, sorry. Right. So we can then basically get rid of that entire row and connect to that entire row. And I want to try and do that in a way where we, the wires, as far to the outside of this thing as possible, so because we've still got to get all this crap on, so I don't want those to be in the way. So let me just space these out into the correct place. And what I'm going to do is, thinking about this, we're going to use both sides of the board. So just to maximise the amount of space. So one of the ways we could do that is we can, if we press F on this, we will flip it and now, this means it is now on the back of the board. Now this could be a little bit confusing, but it should be all right. And now we know that that, we know that that has to connect to there. So if we move this, so it's actually there, sort of directly behind it, then we've actually got a reasonable, a reasonable setup here where I can now connect these two together. I can connect them on either on the front or the back. It doesn't actually matter. Let's do it on the front. I can press X here and then actually connect that up now. Now we know that this has to connect down all the way down to there and so that needs to also go down there but we're going to have to fit everything else in as well. If I just roughly route this down and then go on to the next one and do that for each of them, then I'll get back to you. Yeah, I'll just do it the next for the next one. So I want this to be aligned. I need a bigger grid really to align, align all of these things. Uh, if we go back to a five mil grid and just sort of move, move it like, yeah, probably do we want it? Probably there, does that make sense? Um, Trying to find a suitable place for it. I think I think that's it then. Let's check that, that is actually aligned as well. Let's move that again. Right, so now these are well roughly evenly spaced. Um, yeah, then the LEDs are now evenly spaced. So as I said, I'm gonna move all these resistors on the back of these, I'll just do it for this one as well. Probably need to create that other one at the top, but let me just do it for this one. So set the grid back to something reasonable. Then I have to flip this one. So this is on the back of the PCB. And then I can connect up this, because I've put it that way. And then this one also I can connect up. I'm just going to do it roughly. I'm going to move it. I just want to see. You see what I'm doing here? So they're all being pushed. Pushed to the outside. Or pushed, pushed round like that. So let me do it for the rest of them and then get back to you. Right. Okay, so I've done that now on mine. And I've moved the 555 down a bit. And so now all the LEDs are connected up. 
So that's one part of it done. What you'll notice is, you know, you can do things like that because this, that will be very, that's part of the copper. And on top of that, there will be a solder mask to mask that track off. And in any case, so no, there's no metal parts on the bottom of that chip anyway, and they won't be touching that track. So when you solder that 5595 five, in, they won't be touching that, so it'll be fine. I had to turn, rotate some of these around using R. But if you look now, so all of my resistors are on the back, and the, um, the LEDs are on the front. And of course, that's fine. That can be on the back, because it, if you look where the holes are drilled through, the hole, none of the holes are conflicting, so it's fine. If you want to see the layers, you can turn off the copper layers or the back copper. We haven't got any back copper at the moment. You can turn off, for example, the text on the front, or and then I can turn off the silk screen on the front and just see, as well as the front copper, and just see the things on the back. And I'll leave them on for now. So now we need to think: what are we going to do next? I think probably move this 555 closer. I just want to have a, a grid where I can align things better. And probably try and connect up the 555. If we look at the rat's nest here, there's still a lot of things to connect. And if you look around here, I haven't connected up the ground because there's a ground pin on each of these. What I'll probably do is use the back layer and connect up the grounds for that. But that's easy to do. So what probably the best thing to do next is to actually do... We can do a couple of these, actually, because some of these are very direct. We'll just put them in the front. So X... Because what this is, this, remember this is the output of the shift register. And that's going into the clock, and it's going into the, the register clock. So the register clock and the serial clock. And we can see actually there's a ground here, we may as well connect those two grounds together. Actually, we'll do that on the back layer. So if you want to go on the back layer, you press the back copper. And do that. Now, it's a green is the back layer. What we can also do is VCC, because they happen to be a lot closer, conveniently opposite each other. Now we haven't got the main VCC yet, but at least they're connected. Now looking at this, I think probably the best thing to do is to try and use this space here to assemble the XOR gate, because that's probably one of the most complicated elements of this design is the XOR gate, because it's got so many resistors and so on. And the best way to assemble it, I would imagine, is to go back to the Christmas, uh, to the schematic and just try and actually look for these numbers and try and, in a way, assemble it like this in the same layout as that because then we'll be able to see what we're actually doing. So let's do that and let's start with by putting Q1 at the top somewhere. In fact, let's just lay out, we could lay out the transistors in fact. So it goes Q1, 2, 3, 4 and then 5. So where is Q1? Is there? And uh, what you can actually do, in fact, is you can actually select a footprint by um, searching for it. So if I look for Q1, it actually takes me there. It's pretty. <laughs> we knew that anyway. But you can actually do that. So what do we want? Now the way that this transistor is laid out, the emitter, all of the emitters go to ground. 
So what we want to do in that case, are they not connected to the rat's nest? None of them are connected to the rat's nest. Yeah, there was an error when we imported the footprint, which said something about the pins. And I think what the person has done here, they've labeled these pins E, B, and C for some weird reason, instead of one, two, and three. So if we go back to the schematic, you know, we've got one, the emitter is one, the base is two, and the collector is three. But for some reason in here, the emitter is one, the emitter is E, the base is B, and the collector is C. That's not good. So in fact, but that is the footprint I want. So this is actually a good opportunity to see how you could modify a footprint. So if I click on this, or just or press E on it, for example, I can either click on it and go to footprint edit with footprint editor, or press E on it and go to the footprint editor. Now there's no active library. Again, we always have to have an active library. And we haven't got this the separate library for footprints. So we need to actually create. We're going to save this footprint in a new library. And we're going to what we'll do is we create a dot pretty folder. So the new foot component footprints actually have a dot pretty extension so we're going to call this christmas sea bubble footprints dot pretty does that work i'm going to have to create a new library first Right, so now that we save the footprint in a new library, I can actually set the library. It should be. Oh, yeah, of course. We have to go to. Right, okay. Uh, now that did actually work. <laughs> but. Um, I, this is very clunky at the moment. They've just migrated to the new footprint library. Um, or the new ta footprint tables. So what we actually need to do, we can't set the active library to see bauble. Oh, we can. Apparently. And now that we've set it at see bauble, we can now save the footprint in the active libra library. And now we've got a footprint in, in our active library. What we can then do is edit these silly pins and give them actual numbers, not E. So E is one, two is base. So it's really silly that they've done that. I don't know why they've done that. Right, so now they actually have pads. So we save that again, same name, see bauble. Now what I want to do is, because we've now done that, these footprints are wrong. Save this, save PCB new. Now you end up doing this all the time. There's a couple of different ways to do, to do this now. What we want to do is change all the footprints in PCB new for that um, footprint, for the transistor to the one that we just edited. So what we do is, an easy way to do it again, we don't need to re-export the netlist, hasn't changed, but sometimes I just do it anyway, just because I'm kind of into it. Then go run CVPCB again. Now this time for these guys, we go and find the C bauble thing. And what we'll find is that the C bauble footprint library isn't there. This is because we have to add it to the library tables. So if you didn't see that, you go to preferences, edit library table, and these are all the kind of default library tables that are installed. 
So uh, the path is actually relative to GitHub. It actually gets these all of these library footprints from GitHub. So we go to, if you click here, project specific libraries, I added one called C Bauble, and I already did this. That's why um, actually that's why it say I was able to save it before and find it. If you can't find a footprint library, you have to edit the library tables and add it in manually. And that's that's the directory where we where we created the the files. Does that make sense? Sorry, I'm getting a little bit tired. Um, so Seabobble will actually be at the bottom. Now we can connect this one from Seabobble and this is actually connected up. Save this. Go back into PCB new and then load the netlist again. Read current netlist. It says the change is made. Well, well, can it be undone? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And oh yeah. So we want to actually change the footprint. Otherwise we won't have changed it. Right, so now that we've changed it, now you can see these are actually connected up. So that was kind of, I don't know why those have got, how didn't have the pins mapped properly, but it was kind of good for us because we got to create a new footprint library and edit it and deal with a problem. So where were we? Okay, let me just go back to something. Before, when I clicked on this, edited it, I went to Footprint Editor. If I remember the steps, what I did was say save footprint in new library. We then created a directory cbauble footprints.pretty and pressed OK. Now I was what I actually did when I paused it was I went to set active library and I looked for C bauble and C bauble was not there and I was like oh yeah how do I get that there again so what I did I actually went back to PCB new and went to library tables and added it in to the project specific libraries I think I thought I'd then deleted it because then I was going to go through that again but when I went back and showed you last last time in the footprint editor, I see bauble was there when I went to see active library. But so if you do that last step that we were talking about and see bauble is not there when you try and save this edited footprint in the when when you try and set the active library to save this footprint in it, go to PCB new and add the library path in. Now, if I remember correctly, where that actually is put is in config kicad fp lib table. And that actually it, it contains everything and it should contain the bauble one as well. No. <laughs> but it contains all the rest of them. So where is that? Uh, I don't know. But you could you could even you could add it in here if you wanted. This is another place the KiCad looks is in config KiCad FP lib table. They need to sort out this FP lib table thing. It's a bit clunky, but hopefully you will be able to work that out from what I've said. I hope so. Otherwise, I will have to redo all this crazy routing and stuff. Now, so where were we? What I was going to do is try and lay out the transistors like they're laid out here. So it's Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and Q5. Okay, fair enough. So where is Q2? Let's move that to here. I'll get rid of that rat's nest. It's horrendous. And then it was Q3 here, Q4 there. Q5 there. Cool. So 
So these are now laid out in a kind of sane or semi-sane way. But let's just sort of align them a bit so they're a bit neater. And we know that we're going to have to have... Well, first of all, we know that they're, they're actually the wrong way around because we want the emitters at the bottom and the collectors at the top. Well, do we? Yeah, I suppose if we want to lay it out exactly like in our in our schematic editor, then we do need to do that. So just rotate these around. Right now they're the same uh, direction as in our schematic, with the collector at the top, then the base, then the emitter. And they're in a kind of reasonable place as well, by the looks of it. Is there enough space there to fit resistors between? Probably, well, we'll find out. So let us connect up all of the collector resistors. What I've realized you can do is, if you click on this, show local rat's nest, you can just see what this is connected to. You see that its ground is connected to there. And yeah, all the grounds are obviously connected. We're going to try and leave all the grounds for the back layer. But we can also see that it's connected to this resistor. Um, I'll tell you what, let's just put this like this. And then we'll do that for each of these each of these resistors. So try and move try and move all of the um, input resistors. So these are all of the all of these ones, the four point seven K ones, so that they are above the uh, collector of each respective collector. So do that and I was going to say do that and get back to me, but actually it's not, there's not actually that many of them, is there? Okay, that was that one, was it? I thought it was a bit tricky. Why is it connected to that? Okay, I realised it. There's actually more than one resistor sometimes connected to the collector because we have, for example, here. Um, there's this R13 is connected to that collector, and so is R12. So, let's just move these by number. So R5 first, R12 next. Otherwise, it'll become confusing. So do that, and then get back to me. Right, so there, all those resistors are in the right place now. And so let's now connect them up. Let's try using the front layer. Now we might have to change something around it when it gets a bit more complicated. But let's just do that for now. Now we know all these are also VCC. So for now as well, just connect these up, some of them up like this, so that they're partially connected. I should just connect that one up. Because <laughs> when it's going to be tricky is how is when all the other resistors get in here. Let's just do this one thing at a time. Let's start with this, re this transistor and put the resistors in for it. So there are two resistors associated with this um, base. There's a 10k resistor and then there's which R3 and a 10k pull-up called R2. So let's start with R3. Let's find it there. So there we go. And then R2 is the pull-up. Now, so 
So we can see that we need to connect that to the base. And this also connects, you see, to down here. In order to get down there, this is where it might end up being tricky, but let's just go, let's just try and connect this up. Because we know we've got to get there. We know that the other end of this does connect to that pull-up resistor. And then the other connections are, well, yeah, obviously yeah, also connects down to that pin down there. But let's leave that for now. Leave that connection to the pin. But we can do the connection to the pull-up resistor. And the pull-up resistor, we'll leave that ground again for now. We'll try and do those at the end. So that is those two resistors done. Let's do the same for those two. So that's R4 and R1. I don't know if this is going to work. I've not actually done I've not actually done this. I've not actually laid out this board before. So I typically move around by the way just by zooming in and out again. It's easier with F1 and F2. What did I say there were R4 and R1? Let's move that over. And we'll kind of try and connect that up the same way. So. I wonder if that should be the other way around, because we're probably going to have to go around like that to the next uh, input. So if we, yeah, that would make more sense. If we just rotate that round, delete delete those tracks, and then connect connect this one up again. So I'm just pressing X again to start a thing. Yeah, that's a bit more sensible. Yeah. Now, again, I'm going to rotate this round again, pressing R to rotate it round because I want to connect. I know that's got to connect there. This again connects to there. Since that goes to ground, actually, it's just a pull-up resistor. This is just in the way. So let's just move this to. Here. Actually, we can move. That's all that is, is a pull up resistor. So let's move that to here as well. Just let me delete that again. So you'll often find yourself doing this. Once you lay something out, it becomes obvious that actually that's there's, there'll be some better position for it. I'm just going to delete that. Let's rotate that around as well. Just no re There's just no reason to have it The Okay, cool. And then we, what we've got, these two pins here are actually these break-off points here. And then we know they go to the third one, Q3, which is here. So we may as well actually get those two resistors, R7 and R8, and do that wiring next. Okay, so let's connect up um, R7 and R8. R8. Now, look, the resistor numbers are going down. We're getting there. I'm just going to put them. I'm going to put them actually here. You know, because I want to. Now we remember, so these are. From this one, actually, we can just. And the cool thing is about this, we can go through these resistors. It doesn't matter. Let me rotate that around. It doesn't make sense. So we can actually come down here to connect these up. Move 
move these out of the way. No. Just these. It doesn't always seem to select very well, I don't really understand why. I've decided that they should go there because <laughs> we're getting pretty close to that 555 timer now. Okay, that's uh, no, we can't do that actually. That's bonkers. Can't go through another pin like that. No, we won't. Right, so now we've actually connected up, that's pretty much connected up, the only thing that's not connected up there is they've got to go, they've actually got to be connected up to the, to the input, inputs, so where are those, probably somewhere horrendous aren't they, okay, the, the ones, one, the ones there, yeah, I'll just leave those um for now. Yeah, it might make sense to rotate this whole thing around 90 degrees so those two inputs are at the bottom, and then they could easily connect to or could connect to there. Because the other ones actually got to connect to there. Anyway, let's carry on connecting this up. Let's do the outputs of these two. R9 and R10. And they are going to come from here. Sorry, that's VCC. Output the collector R9 and R10. <laughs> yeah, what I've just realized is if we try and go from there, output of that collector, and we've actually got to go. If we look at the schematic, oh no, we've only got to go to there. But that one has got to go to there as well. That's not going to work very well. So, because that's in the way. You'll find this happens a lot. Um, so just move that out of the way. And obviously I need to connect that up again. I'm just going to delete these tracks again. And just move these down. Yeah, so what I actually I'm just gonna put that above there. So this is all. This is actually going to go around the outside of that, and then this one can go around the inside. That's R one. Oh yeah, R one just goes to ground. Pull up. Okay. So what were we actually doing? R9 and R10. What is R11? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So that was because these things are in the way. Just remove them. Well, yeah. Here's an example where you can delete a segment. Yeah, you end up doing this quite a lot as well. And where do R8 and R7 go? They go into the base of this thing. So... Okay, that's better. R11 is the collector for this. The resistor that just goes to... Yeah. Okay. 
can rotate that around. Move that stupid footprint. You can move the footprint as well, you see. Now, we're almost we're getting there now. So I wanted the output of this one and this one to connect to this one. With the bar R9 and R10. You can see it can get actually quite confusing. Especially when you start getting tired. Um, those two outputs there and they've got to go both they're both going to the base of this this isn't the best wired up thing but I just want to show you that it's actually possible and then you can try and do it yourself uh, that's all done now we need the outputs of that into there via R13 and R14 so you're almost getting there now there's not many left not many left now. Mm. There's our fourteen. Yeah, it's true. Actually, I could just connect it to that pin. It's actually the same thing. If you look at it, that pin there is there. So, that's, that's there. we're talking about that one. Actually. Right, then this goes to the base. So you can see, actually, we're almost. That's almost. That's actually all connected up now. It's just the output now that needs to be connected. The output of this one. Actually needs to be connected. Oh yeah, we don't because we made it so our output wasn't floating around. We pulled up the Zor output. We may as well stick that pull-up resistor over here. Just wondering why that was a R31. And then this needs to connect to here. Can I even get round there without going onto the back layer? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's completely nuts. Now that's most of the resistors. Oh yeah, we've got resistors on here, haven't we? On the 555 timer. To connect it up. Remember correctly, there's actually one going into the input. There's, a, there's one here. 470 ohm one going into pin eight. So what is that damn thing? That one, R28. Yeah, it is R28. So move that over. over there, that goes to VCC so we'll just leave that for now 
and then we need a resistor between so there and there actually it's 10k and another 10k between 7 and 6 so let's just get this damn thing done to do this but I'm gonna to have to do it. I'm just doing this temporarily. It's like terrible routing. Do not do this for your routing. Clean this up. Now yeah cool. That's now connected. Yeah so we've got a bridge then between this pin and here via that resistor it looks a bit bonkers but it is there so that's actually though that first one then there's one more between the next pin um, just do this. we've got the switches as well but we'll do those off we'll do this in the next tutorial um, Okay, that's that one in, and then we've got capacitor, goes from pin 6 to ground, so let's move that capacitor over, to what, I'm going to just move all these over, so I don't have to keep going all the way over there. Yeah, may as well go there. Why not? And then that goes to ground as well. So we are very close now. And what we also have here is a pin going around to pin two. There. Let me just do that like that. And there's one resistor remaining. Who does that belong to? Yeah, that's the so that is the output of our um well, it's Azor input actually. I wanna put that I prefer to put that closer to that Zor input rather than the output it makes more sense. Oh no, sorry, that's uh, our input, VCC input. There we go. And then there's just these three switches and the power input. So this is our power. And well, these switches are just jumpers at the moment, aren't they? But. If we look at that, we've now actually got everything on there. If you look view 3D display, you can actually 
Uh, oh, I see nothing. So I need to delete this. Otherwise, it thinks it's done some cutout. Just pressing delete here. Tricky to delete this stupid stuff sometimes. There we are. Now, so we save that. Now, if we look, view 3D display. Yeah, cool. You can actually see our PCB here and where all the components will actually be. And let's see that there's those components on the back. Cool, eh? It's laid out pretty badly, but. It's almost connected up. We just need to connect up. There's like a few things left. If I turn on the rat's nest. Yeah, there's all the grounds, you see, and all of the VCCs and the switches. But that's considerably less than was there before. So we'll do that the next tutorial. Because I've got to go to bed. Now, <laughs> maybe you can lay this out differently. Or maybe you can do it on a smaller footprint. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Okay, that's it for now. Hope that was useful.